Have you ever thought about the future of sewing? I mean, I love to sew, and I'm guessing that because you're watching, you probably like to sew too. But what about the future? What about the upcoming generations? How many of them sew? How many opportunities do they have <laughs> to experience the wonderfulness of sewing? Well, it's up to us. No pressure, but we are the future of sewing. I'm going to call this Sewing Deck Talk, Each One teach one. Let's explore some ways that we can spread <laughs> the news that sewing is fun to all kinds of people. I'm Kathy. This is Sewing Tech Talk. So now there's lots of ways we can spread the news about sewing. Only one of the ways is that we can you know, teach someone to sew. But there's not that many opportunities out there for young people to learn to sew, really, unless we do it. Now we can expose people with beautiful work, we put it out there, we talk about sewing. That's great. But you know, if we even get them and start even little kids, give them a little taste of it, well, maybe that'll start a lifelong interest. And then down the road, they might make their own wedding garments. Who knows? So for my handout for today, I put together a list. Now you probably know all kinds of things that you probably should do if you're teaching anybody to sew. But this is kind of a list of things to think about, especially if you're teaching smaller children, younger children. We're also gonna to talk today about teaching, well, kids that maybe aren't kids anymore, tweens, teens, and even young adults, even older adults. So the, the handout just lists some things to think about. And we are going to be sewing on the Baby Lock Vesta today. Now, you may not think of the Vesta as an introductory level machine. And quite frankly, it's kind of not. But I'm going to go through some, some reasons why a more, let's call it advanced machine, might be a better choice when you're teaching someone to sew. But let's talk about the basics of what we might want to think about when we're teaching some younger children maybe to sew. Now, how old do you start? Well, first of all, you need one. <laughs> you can't just, you have to have access to a child. You just can't go out and pluck a random child out from the environment. You need to have access to one. So that's first and foremost. But I have a little project I'm going to do, and I'm, we're going to be making we're going to be making some fun quilted hearts. And there's a reason I have for making little quilted hearts, and I'll share that at the very end. But I think that's going to add to um, the experience. And like I said, I'll tell you about that at the end, and it's also on the handout. Now, when sewing with younger children, it needs to be fun. Oh my goodness. Sewing, well, I'm probably not telling you anything that you probably didn't know, but think about the first time that you learned to sew. I remember my first sewing teacher. I think she was a retired officer from, I don't know. I mean, there were so many rules. I sew today despite her instruction. So let's keep it fun when we're teaching a young person to sew. What age do you start? Well, that depends on the child. Children mature at different rates. They have different maturity levels, different temperaments. They have different motor skills that come on at different times of their lives. Some children as young as five might be able to sit on your lap and sew. And when you're starting about doing it on their own, you might be getting up into the eight, nine range. And remember, we're not talking just girls. Every child can sew, boys, girls, Every child really needs the opportunity to experience this. And then they can decide on their own if they, you know, want to continue on. So keep it, first thing is keep it fun. And the other advice I have for you is to take yourself out of the equation. It's going to be messy. Kids, well, especially younger kids, they don't have the rules that we have. So I'm going to suggest that because we're probably not going to want to deal with all kinds of sharp objects, 
you might want to pre-cut some fabrics up. And it could be all kinds of different fun fabrics from your scrap bin. They don't have to match. In fact, it's better if they don't. All kinds of different colors. To make these little quilted hearts, I just have a basic layer of, of like a muslin type fabric, a thin layer of batting, and I drew some heart shapes on another piece of muslin on the top. I cut out different strips and squares and sew those on and they can choose what they want to do. Now some teachers when they're dealing with small children they start with hand sewing first and quite honestly that might be a little bit easier less scary for you when we're dealing for a with a machine but use real materials. Have you ever tried to sew with a plastic needle? <laughs> not fun. So pre-cut some pieces, do whatever you can to keep the process safe, and you're going to want to supervise. And the one rule that's really important to share is sharp things hurt. So we want to make sure that we mm, supervise, make sure the child is safe, but don't limit creativity. You want them to get out there and just have a blast. And don't take suggestions. Oh, you know, that blue might be better than the green or the, or the, the giant magic marker might not be the thing we want to draw on with fabric. There are no rules when it comes to kids. Just let them play. And it's going to be messy and you're going to have to be patient. So now, what is my case for using a machine that's a little bit more than a toy sewing machine? Some people, when they think about teaching children to sew, they think about getting the child a toy sewing machine. And I think you know what I'm referring to. A toy sewing machine is just that little plastic machine. It's probably no bigger than this. And, well, quite frankly, they just don't work very well. So I do have 10 rules or 10 ideas why it might be better to use a little bit mm, more than a toy machine when you're teaching a child to sew. There's always a chance to get a less expensive machine, but a toy machine, you're going to know one when you see one. So first and foremost, a bigger machine that actually is meant for sewing by adults, it just works good. Uh, those smaller machines, uh, you can't even keep them threaded. They, the, the tension is bad. Some of them don't even go in reverse. <laughs> so think about a machine that's going to be a little bit more of a machine. You don't have to go up as high as the Vesta, but think of a decent machine that works. And the second thing is, this is an electronic machine. You don't have to start on one like that. But a mechanical machine has all these different dials for setting up and doing different stitches. And then that's something that might be frustrating for you or for a child to deal with. When you're dealing with an electronic machine, you literally just touch the stitch and everything is set up and the machine is ready to go. That can be quite an advantage for a child and for the teacher who might get kind of frustrated and forget to change a dial because they're dealing with someone squirming on their lap. So an electronic machine can give you kind of a, an advantage when it comes to the process of having the child sew. Now, kids love funny stitches and a machine that's an electronic machine, well, it has quite a few fun stitches. Sometimes when I work at a sewing show and I have the opportunity to show a machine to a smaller child, I guarantee you every time doesn't fail. They want to pick the stitch with the little penguins or the boats or something like that. That's the stitch that they want to stitch. They love the little picture stitches. We may not want to use them. We may not having to yump anything to use them for. I think they were built on the machine for the young and the young at heart. So decorative stitches, yeah, kind of can be fun. The child might get interested in teaching, teaching a row of little puppies or doggies or kittens or penguins. The other advantage to a machine like this is that there is a speed lever on the top of the machine. Why is that an advantage? Well, when a child is learning to sew, you want the machine to go at a slow and steady pace. So how does this feature work? 
when the lever's pushed all the way to the right, and I'm just going to sew a zigzag on top of this heart right here, that when you press down the, pr the presser foot pedal, the machine's going to go 850 stitches a minute. That's kind of scary for some adults, much less kids. So let's see how fast this machine's going to stitch when I go full speed with the lever pressed to the right. Wow, <laughs> that can be pretty scary. But when I change the lever and put it down a little bit farther, maybe to the middle, let's sew that same stitch. Let's pick a zigzag this time. Remember, I can just touch the stitch and it's ready to go. And the speed of the machine is slowed down. So as far as hard as I press that foot pedal, it's not going to go any faster. You want to go really slow? Well, you can go really slow if you need to. And that's quite an advantage when you have a smaller child. Remember, you're keeping their hands away from the needle, you're watching them, you're supervising them. And speaking of hands away from the needle, you can get a needle guard for most machines. You might want to check it out for the machine that you have, but you can get a needle guard that's going to keep little hands from getting any closer to that needle. So the speed control, I think, is a big advantage when it comes to showing children how to sew. And you can slide it to the right as they get more confident, and maybe you get more confident. The other thing I like about an electronic machine is this button right here. That's the automatic scissor button. So let's finish this stitch and I'll show you the advantage of that. So in a traditional mechanical machine, what am I going to do? I'm going to lift up the needle. I could pull it to the back. I could kind of trim those threads. <laughs> I might be using these, and these, my friend, are sharp. So it's kind of nice to have the built-in scissors. And kids might get a big kick out of it. So when I want to clip my threads, I just press the button, and it's automatic. Those threads are clipped, and I don't have to worry about these. That reminds me. If you do need to use scissors with a project for children, you're going to want to, of course, be the absolute supervision at all times. One thing to also think about is after the sewing session, they've seen scissors at work. Hmm, depending on the age of the child, you might want to put these in a super, super safe place. You don't want the child to go out ahead and start to give themselves their own sewing lesson by finding the scissors <laughs> that you have not put away securely. So by all means, Keep them secure during the sewing session, but put them away in case, you know, little hands are climbing up on the chair to get them off the top of the refrigerator. So that's another feature that I think works. Another feature that's great is a child might be sitting on your lap, right? If you have a smaller child that you really want to control, this machine can sew without the foot pedal because you might not, they might not be able to reach it, right? So after I unplug the foot control, the machine will work with the green button. So let's just do another row of stitching. And I don't have the foot control. I'm not using my feet. All I do, lower the speed, press the button, and the machine's going to sew. And I don't have, my, have to worry about how much pressure I'm putting on that foot pedal or even reaching it if I don't have to. So that's a pretty cool feature too, I think. And the button's easy. Green means go. And when I press the button, it's what stops the machine as well. So that might be a great feature to work, to use with a child. I'm going to plug the foot control back in because I can reach the pedals. So now, something else I think that's kind of important with the machine. You're probably going to be wanting to thread it. But this machine is extremely simple and easy to thread. If I want to be changing colors on the machine, let's just go with maybe a slightly different color and just use whatever color that works for you. Let the child choose the colors. You don't want to use difficult to work with threads, so don't even offer them as a choice. You might not be wanting to use metallics, but regular shiny embroidery threads, standard sewing thread, it's all fair game when teaching kids. So now let's rethread the machine.
it's actually pretty simple. <laughs> Even a child could do it. <laughs> That's what we're hoping for. So I'll take the thread out. And the thread path has numbers. So it's really simple to follow. I put the thread on the spindle. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and all I have to do is press the lever on the side and that top needle is threaded. You don't want to see a five-year-old trying to thread a needle because that spells frustration my friend. It even spells frustration to me and I'm not necessarily five years old. The bobbin is really a front-loading drop-in bobbin and the machine automatically will wind a bobbin. That's pretty simple. You might want to do that because that might be a little bit more advanced. But you just take the bobbin, drop it in, pull it around, and you don't have to pull the bobbin up when you start to sew. That might be another thing that you wouldn't have to cover when the child is learning how to sew. Some other machines you have to pull that thread up and if they forget, the machine could jam. So it's kind of nice to have that quick set bobbin and that's going to make it helpful and easier for you to get that process started. Did I mention that the machine works? <laughs> the machine works and the machine works good. So you're not going to be necessarily frustrated with the machine trying to keep the machine operational while you're trying to keep the child operational too. So <laughs> I cannot overemphasize enough. Those toy machines, <laughs> I don't think they work very good. If you ever get a chance to sew on one, <laughs> do yourself a favor, but take a patience pill before you try. And the other thing is, I don't think necessarily you're probably going to want to go out and buy a machine maybe for a child, unless they're super, super interested. So you can let them work on yours if you you know, supervise. The advantage to a machine that's going to be a decent machine that, mach that a child can use is as the child's skills develop, if they get excited about sewing, the machine, well, the machine will grow with them. You don't want a machine that's just going to be a piece of trash after a couple months. If the child isn't excited about sewing, down the road, say you have a machine that you're not interested, well, you could use it as a classroom machine to take the machine back and forth for classes. If you end up with a machine, donate it to a school if the child is absolutely not interested. There's lots of ways that you can take a machine and do some good with it that's not a machine that's not going to work. And did I mention that the machine just works? It works good and it works all the time. So, making my little hearts. Basically, when you're having the child sew, I kind of like to draw the line around there. You can start out with straight lines. You can add all kinds of different, you know, scraps on there. Um, buttons and embellishments might be kind of problematic for small fingers. And especially if they're going to take something like this and play with it later. Because, I mean, maybe ba maybe they wouldn't, but maybe brother, baby brother or sister might pluck off a button that wasn't sewn on secure, securely, and that might be a choking hazard. So be aware of the, of the embellishments that you use. Heck, you could probably even use paper. It really doesn't matter. Just get the child interested and excited. Now, what about the tweens? What about the teens? <laughs> what about the young adults? Well, I want you to think about what you're in competition with. You're in competition with this, aren't you? <laughs> well, maybe we need to put a little technology into the equation. And that's another reason why I'm showing the Vesta today. Because the Vesta is not necessarily just a sewing machine, it's also an embroidery machine. And embroidery by machine might be something to capture the interest of those young sewers that are a little bit older <laughs> than the really small kids. Also remember that when you're a teen or a tween, it's really important what other people think. So let them pick their own projects that they want to do. I'm going to tell you about the heart project in a little bit, but mm, let them pick out what they want. 
don't be insisting they make a skirt to wear to school because that might not happen. But pajamas that nobody else is going to see that are, you know, not, well, in my day, we called it cool. I don't know what we call it now. Give them the opportunity to pick their own project and don't be super, super critical. Let them do it. As long as it holds together, <laughs> it's going to be okay. So now what I want to do is I want to change the Vesta over to do some embroidery and I'm going to make another little heart. And then I'm going to tell you about why am I making quilted hearts? What's the big deal? Well, it has something to do with making this lesson stick. <laughs> so I'm going to change the machine over to embroidery and I will be right back. <laughs> okay, so I put the embroidery unit on and I put the embroidery foot on. Now I just have a piece of fabric. I'm going to make another quilted heart. I just have, now this is the 4x4 hoop. It doesn't come with a Vesta, but I'm using it for a reason. You can get some really nice sewing machines with a 4x4 sewing field in embroidery. They're combination embroidery and sewing machines. So those are available out there and you can do some pretty fun stuff when it comes by to 4x4 embroidery. Now, I'm not pretending that this machine is a video game because I know our competition, but it might be something to really capture the attention of maybe, maybe a younger sewer that might want to do some personalization, make some fun gifts for their friends. Who knows what they might not, what they might want to do. You know, you can actually also use a computer to create your own embroidery designs. Now, that's a lucrative field that, well, it's not a STEM subject, I'm not sure, but kids are into computers and they may take to it like a duck to water. So they could create their own designs. They could even sell them. Who knows? So there's lots of opportunities out there to interface with the modern world when it comes with sewing. And kids may not even know about it. So let's just do a simple quilted hard embroidery with the Vesta. When I open up the machine, the machine is going to find its happy place and doing embroidery is pretty simple because the interface on these embroidery machines is pretty easy. I simply put the fabric into the hoop and on this machine it just slides right on in. And the machine knows the size of the hoop that I've put on so it won't let me do something like stitch out here in the side. It's kind of a cool safety feature for adults and young people alike. So I'm just going to pull up one of the cool frames and I'm definitely going to do a heart. Let's see. There's all kinds of different options. Well, here's two colors right now. That's pretty cool. So when I hit set, I can see the size of that heart. Well, I have a four by four frame, so I'm going to make it just a little bit larger. So when I go to size, I'm going to bump it up so that it fits. Oops, that's a little bit too big for what I'm doing. Let's take it down. It has to be under four inches. Perfect. I can make it a little bit taller if I want. So, so far, so good. Pretty easy, right? And all I have to do is say, OK, I can change colors, edit in embroidery, and I'm basically ready to go. So now when I stitch my heart, it's as fast and easy as that is. And you're going to end up with something that's kind of cool. I have red in there to start out with. Hmm, let's just do that. I lower the boom, press go, and just like that, I'm embroidering. So let's watch it embroider. Now it's ready for the next color. The machine's automatically going to show you what the next color is. Well, I didn't follow the rules and the kids don't have to either. Let's change and let's put a different color in and see what this heart's going to turn out like. Threading is just as simple in embroidery as it is for sewing. Now all I do is press the button and the machine's automatically going to do the next color. It's going to take it a few minutes. 
Notice it's doing each and then clipping the stitches in between. Now I've only done about five petals, but I think you can get the idea. The machine is going to go ahead and finish and sew around my whole heart and add that really cool decorative stitching around the outside edge. There's a lots of designs that are built into the machine that you can add a really pretty design onto the inside of the heart as well. So it's a, can you, can you create your own? Like I said, with a computer you can, and designs are available out there for mm, any kind of image that the kid wants to put out there. They can do cartoon, oh, all kinds of stuff is out there. So you can do embroidery and it might pique the interest of someone that might not think that sewing was well, let's just say it's not grandma's kind of thing anymore. It could be fun because sewing has taken, caught the coattails of technology. Now, I promise you I'd tell you about why I'm doing hearts. I'm doing hearts because there's an organization out there that is a nonprofit. It, it has, it doesn't sell anything. It's totally anonymous. It's kind of a fun project. And it's called, I Found a Quilted Heart. Bring it up so that you can see. And it's, it, it shows this in the handout as well. So it's, I Found a Quilted Heart or ifaqh.com. Now, what it is, is it's completely random. You make cards, you follow their rules, and you put them out there for people to find. And when they find them, if they want to post where they found them, it's great. It's kind of like a random act of kindness. And I think, well, I like random act of kindness. I think kids, that might be something great to teach kids as well. And I think it could make sewing a sticky lesson. Ask any teacher out there what a sticky lesson is. It's a lesson that kind of sticks with you. It's something that you want to go ahead and you want to do and you want to do over and over and over again. So fractions might not be cool unless you know that it teaches you how to absolutely make sure that your little brother doesn't get more of the cupcake than you do when you split it into half. Also, when you put the hearts out, it's completely random. You leave them, do follow the rules, go at their website and you can read all about it. And hmm, that could be an adventure, couldn't it? Don't kids love adventures? You could sew the hearts. Put the secret label on them, put them out there, and if people find them, they can post them on the website and you could keep checking to see if your heart got found. <laughs> I think it might be a great way to get kids involved. And if one of their hearts gets found, oh my goodness, <laughs> you might not keep them away from the sewing machine. So I hope I made a case that, yeah, you may want to teach a child to sew or even a young adult or if you're brave enough, maybe a teenager, but get a decent machine or use your machine. Get them out there, get them interested because it's absolutely no pressure. But the future of sewing, the future of sewing is in our hands, right? And if we teach people to sew, well, we can take that love and we can spread it all over the world or all over the country, or all over city, or even just all over our neighborhood. <laughs> I think that's a great cause. I'm going to shoot it off to George. He's going to tell you a little bit more about <laughs> this machine. Remember, there's other machines out there. You can always call the toll-free number and you can explore what your options are. Yes, this is a great one. But there's lots of different choices out there. Be brave. You can do it. You can show someone how to sew. And you might just want to put a couple quilted hearts out there yourself. It's kind of fun. I'm Kathy. This is Sewing Tech Talk. Thanks for sticking with me today. And remember, go out there and spread the love. Thanks, Kathy. Once again, that was a great presentation. Don't forget to click on the link to download Kathy's uh, guide on that incredible project. Um, now, every once in a while, 
a machines introduced to the industry that really offers high performance at a great value, and that's the Babylock Vesta. Not only is it a great sewing and quilting machine, but it also is an incredible embroidery machine. The embroidery features include a hoop that's larger than 10 by 6, and it has a, a wonderful color touchscreen. And look at this beautiful embroidery. Plus, it removes the jump stitches, and it even has a special uh, software program that sends your design via Wi-Fi right to the machine. Now, that's not all, though. For a sewing machine, it has the automatic fabric sensor that senses fabric from heavy denim to sheer fabric to working with elastic or even uh, a ribbing on a collar like a, a t-shirt knit. But quilting features, it actually will sew in different directions. We have some designs that are incredible for going down the sashing border. It has an automatic quarter inch so you can do your piecing, plus all kinds of wonderful decorative stitches. So as you see, this is an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Now, uh, we have a very special buy on this machine. This machine has a manufacturer suggested list price of $59.99, but right now it's on sale for $39.99, and we're including free shipping across the country, as well as uh, interest-free financing is available. I want to make some, a very special offer for those who are watching Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy, and that is with a mystery bonus. Why is it a mystery bonus? Well, I don't have a lot of them, but I want to make sure those who are contacting me, all you have to do is mention Kathy our Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy, and I have this bonus value that is incredible. So give us a call at 1-800-865-9664 and discover how easy it is to get an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Bye for now.